You're listening to The Cash Podcast, creating affluence, success, and happiness with your financial surgeon, Adam Coach, president and portfolio manager at Libertas Wealth Management Group at LibertasWealth.com. Happy holidays, everyone. I'm so excited for the holidays this year because we're all, all of us, that means us, you, everybody, we're all finishing up the second year, or at least getting close to it, since the COVID pandemic began. I'm taking some time off between Christmas Eve and coming back after New Year's Day. I'm anxiously looking forward to spending some good, lazy, intentional time with my bride and two boys. But we have one last podcast episode this year before turning the calendar into 2022. And speaking of, as a quick FYI, we're going to be changing up the podcast next year. And instead of sending out one every week, we're going to be changing the frequency to a bi-weekly schedule. And the reason for this is because we received a lot of feedback from people who say that they want to see more articles and written material. So the goal in 2022 is going to be to shoot one podcast out every week, or I'm sorry, every other week. And in the off weeks, we're going to be writing a Coach's Corner article to mix things up. The plan this year was to do more Coach's Corner articles, but honestly, we just ended up doing so many uh, podcasts vlogcasts, screencasts, and videos um, that we really didn't get around to do, doing too many articles. So if you want to receive these articles, they're going to be coming out as well. Be sure to head over to our website at libertaswealth.com and subscribe, and they'll hit your email inbox whenever we publish them. All right, so back to the discussion at hand here. Today, we're going to be explaining that this what this whole Santa Claus rally thing is about. But before we get started, as always, a few housekeeping items. First off, thanks so much for joining us. My hope is that you learn a little bit more on each and every one of these episodes so that you become more successful, wealthier, happier, and above all, more educated than you were before you started listening today. So come back often and subscribe. These episodes appear both on iTunes and YouTube. And you can also follow me on Twitter at Adam Koch and on Instagram at Financial Surgeon. Uh, last but not least, all links, visuals, charts, and additional educational resources are always available on our website. And then if you would like to look at the two charts, I'm just going to be showing actually one chart and one table today. Feel free to go to the YouTube page and check that out where you can uh, rewind, fast forward, pause, and uh, change, the, of course, the video quality of the chart itself. So let's go ahead and jump into it here. Uh, the first... Quote of the day uh, is the first thing we always want to go over, and this is Yale Hirsch, who was the is, he's an author. He was the founder of Stock Traders Almanac. Jeff Hirsch, his son, runs it today and does a wonderful job of putting together incredible seasonal data going back uh, for well forever. A lot of the data that we look at since 1950, um, because that was since the Industrial Revolution pretty much started. But the quote of the day today was it's from Yale Hirsch and what he said was if the Santa Claus if Santa Claus should fail to call bears may come to broad and wall and what that basically means is the Santa Claus rally if it doesn't come to Wall Street if we don't see a Santa Claus rally then we could see a bear market at broad and wall and broad and wall is where the New York Stock Exchange is so if Santa Claus should fail to call bears may come to broad and wall and we're going to talk a lot about what the Santa Claus rally is today kind of explain how it works or how it's supposed to work anyway, what the numbers look like if it doesn't work, and some things to pay attention to as we work our way over the course of the next two weeks into the new year. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, first and for foremost, we've got uh, the concept of seasonality in general, which, you know, I've, I've done podcasts in the past, written articles about how the seasonally weak months of the year are between May 1st and Halloween. That's why the saying is, sell in May and go away. Uh, and then we have the seasonally strong months of the year, which start on November 1st and go all the way through uh, April 30th. So... We're living in the stronger months of the year right now, but there's not just seasonality when we look at this, you know, the different halves of the year or, um, you know, during the year, again, from between May 1st and Halloween and then from November 1st through April 30th. We also have other, other statistics and seasonality um, going back to uh, the 50s and beyond when we look at things like, um, let's just say, the, the fact that the fourth quarter of, this, of this, uh, the year is typically the best quarter for the stock market or that September is typically the worst month of the year for the stock market. Here's a new one that most of you probably haven't seen before but or, he or heard of before, but uh, the Black Friday seasonality. 
Um, if the stock market falls on Black Friday, normally what happens is you see a rebound the next week. So you typically see, tend to see this, this rebound over the course of the next several days the following week after Black Friday, um, after Thanksgiving in November. And this accuracy, seasonally speaking, is 71% accurate. So in other words, 71% of the time, the market bounces and rebounds the next week. In 2021, this year, however, Black Friday was the worst Black Friday ever. Uh, we had no rebound, to make matters worse, we had no rebound the following week. Instead, we just had more losses. And those losses have just continued into December. So um, we haven't seen what normally takes place. Again, 71% accuracy here. And instead of getting a rebound, we, we saw the market continue to fall. And then as the, the month moved over into December, again, you would t tend to see maybe some positivity, especially, uh, at least from a mean reversion standpoint, let's just say. Um, but we did not mean revert, and instead the market continued to head lower. Uh, we saw a little bit of a bounce, and then the market's headed lower, head lower again. And now we're all kind of looking at ourselves going, okay, is this market going to turn around? And are we going to see a Santa rally, a Santa Claus rally? So that's what we're waiting for at this point. And it's really important when you look at things from a seasonally or statistical standpoint, historically speaking. So let's talk about the Santa Claus rally. Uh, first and foremost, uh, to understand why this happens, uh, tax loss harvesting usually dominates the first half or so of the month in December. Now, what's tax loss harvesting? Well, tax loss harvesting is where uh, investors, institutions, smart money, what they take uh, investments that have lost money throughout the year or ha they have losses on the books that they have not written off and they sell those investments that are losers to take the write-off against any gains they had in the prior uh, part of the year. So in the, using 2021 as an example, uh, January and the first part of February were great. The first six weeks of the of this uh, year, when you look at almost all stocks, small caps, mid caps, large caps, uh, did extremely well. Since February, what we've seen is this this deterioration underneath the surface, where more and more stocks over time since February have continued to deteriorate below the surface, meaning, and, and that's what we call weak breadth. And uh, not to get too detailed here, but if we had some, let's just say we have some investments that we sold earlier in the year, and those investments made money. Uh, later in the year, what you can do is if you own investments that are down in value, you can sell those investments, take the loss, write it off against the gains earlier in the year, and what happens is, is you now don't have to pay tax on those gains from earlier this year. On the other hand, if you would have done nothing and you just held those unrealized losses through the new year, then you would have to pay tax on the gains from earlier in the year, um, and then you would, you know, well, you'd have to pay tax. I guess that's the bottom line. And then you'd have these unrealized losses that you may or may not take, um, but it wouldn't be as advantageous to hold them into the new year, basically. So tax loss harvesting, what happens is then you have these, in, in the ca case of this year, a very small handful of large cap and mega cap stocks have pulled the market up. While underneath you have a bunch of stocks, uh, mid caps, small caps, micro caps, a, a huge portion of the market uh, has been actually going down in value. So when you look at uh, a typical uh, stock portfolio, you'd probably have quite a few stocks that are down. Um, I'll talk more about this in our market outlook uh, presentation, our screencast. Um, which will be coming out just after the first of the year. So I don't want to cross-pollinate here and get into too much detail about what has happened this year in terms of the market or the market of stocks and um, with, with breadth and the percentage of stocks that are down off their highs, how low they are uh, on what indices and so on and so forth. So let's just stick to tax loss harvesting here. So if we have these stocks that have done poorly and a lot of stocks have done poorly this year, and we sell those stocks to take advantage of tax loss harvesting, what that does is the supply, or in other words, the selling, creates more downside pressure on those investments, which causes the market to go down for the first part of December. So again, this is kind of a, something that typically happens on an annual basis. Some years are more drastic than others. Um, this year has been pretty drastic, obviously, especially since Black Friday. Um, but during that first half of the month, we've got the tax loss harvesting that takes place that pushes the market down. Like I said earlier, the fourth quarter, historically the best quarter for the stock market on average. And since 1950, December is the third best month of the year for both the S&P 500 and the Dow. 
And then for the, when you look at small caps, so the stuff that gets sold typically into the first half of the month, December is actually the second best month of the year historically, uh, with the exception, if you look back to 2018, just three years ago, uh, 2018 experienced the worst December since 1931. So that was a little bit different, and obviously that moves the averages a little bit here. But the post-election years are a little bit different. And what I mean by that is when we look at a post-election year, we don't see things work out like we normally do with the averages. And again, I always tell this joke, and uh, it, it's you know the, this, the story about the guy who drowned in a, a river that was an average of four feet deep, and that's that's the joke. So you know it's it's averages. It's just that you know the a river that's four feet deep could be um, twelve feet deep in the middle. So um, when we look at averages, that's what they are. Obviously, they help us kind of guide our decisions. And what we really want to pay attention to is when those averages don't work out. That tells us information that maybe things are bucking the trend, whether that be for better or for worse. So when we look at a post-election year like the one we're living in right now, what we typically see is the market going down in December right up into the last week and a half or so, call it two weeks of the month. But most of the month of December during a post-election year is down. And that's kind of what we've seen this year so far. So I guess that's good, right? Because we want things to track. Uh, we, we like we like it when there's um, certainty or at least when things are going how we expect they will. Uncertainty is always a little bit tougher to, to swallow. But again, uh, post-election years like the one we're living in today are different. Uh, it's the fourth, it's it's the fourth best month of the year for the Russell 2000. So that's small cap stocks as opposed to the second in a normal year. It's the fifth best month for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. It's the seventh best month for the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq, which now we're talking, you know, the S&P and the Nasdaq are in the bottom half of the year now um, when we're talking about December as a month. And then still, you know, small caps what happens after the tax loss harvesting is over with, they tend to round the corner and outperform larger companies or, or exhibit relative strength toward the middle of the month leading up to what we call the Santa Claus rally. And that starts, the Santa Claus rally starts the day after Christmas and it ends on the second trading day after the new year. So to recap here, basically what we're talking about is a phenomenon that, that, that is uh, started by institutions and investors selling their losers for the year, and there's been a lot of losers this year, and then pushing those prices down further when they hit the sell button, which causes weakness for the first part of the month of December. As those, the selling stops and people start purchasing those maybe better valued stocks, maybe one might say, um, but in either case, when, once the selling stops, demand picks back up and we start to see more upside toward the end of the month, which is what leads us to what, again, we call the Santa Claus rally. Now, when we look at the Santa Claus rally, um, this year, the rally is going to begin on December 27th, that's next Monday, and it's going to end on January 4th. The seven, when you look at these seven days, historically speaking, they're up about 79% of the time. I'll just say 80% of the time, they're up. So that's, you know, good, right? Now, when it's down, that's when you need to pay attention. And what I mean by that, the last five times it was in the red, January was mostly in the red. And then the remainder of the first quarter and the year wasn't typically all that pleasant. Now, to get into some more details, um, when we look at the market going back in time, the good news is, again, that the Santa Claus rally is usually positive. So that's what we're hoping for, right? We want to see a good rally into the new year. But when December is a down month, in other words, when we don't get that Santa Claus rally, we don't get that push northward into the end of the year, it's usually at, at a turning point in the market. Now, that turning point could be obviously near a top or a bottom, um, but if it ends up in the red, that doesn't necessarily mean that we have to be at the top of the market. I think, I think it's important to understand that the market has an upward bias and that we don't want to make the assumption that we need to be pessimists um, because of the news that we're watching or the things that we're seeing that freak us out, um, whether that be government debt, inflation, Omicron virus, you know, you pick the apocalypse du jour, it doesn't really matter. I think we understand that it doesn't necessarily mean we're at the top. It could mean we're at the bottom and that the turning point uh, could be at the end or beginning of 2022. And then we could start seeing things get better into uh, after the new year. However, it is still crucial to pay attention 
either way, because again, the last five times the Santa Claus rally was negative, the market experienced flat years in 1994, 2004, and 2015, which is nothing to be afraid of. Flat years aren't bad, obviously. There was a mild bear market that ended in February of 2016, uh, so kind of a, a, a weak bear market. And 2015 and 16 both had pretty had uh, drops, I believe, of 12 and a half, if I remember correctly, and 14.7 percent within 20 months of one another. Um, and by the way, if you ever wondered why they call them bear markets and bull markets, it's because bears attack with their claws from the top down, and bulls attack with their horns from the bottom up. So bull markets are good markets because they're, again, bulls attacking from the ground up, and bear markets are bad markets because they attack with their claws from the top down. But anyway, uh, the other two times that we saw um, the Santa Claus rally, rally negative uh, were two really, really long, horrific, terrible, grinding bear market crashes in 2000 with the dot-com bubble and then in 2008 with the Great Recession, the mortgage crisis, and so on. Now, there's been several bear markets, you could argue, that have happened both here in the United States. You could call, you could call uh, the uh, COVID crash a, a bear market, even though it, la- it did not last very long. The recovery <clears throat> was extremely fast. Um, I believe the market bottomed and headed northward uh, to the tune of 34% in only 22 days. Um, don't quote me on that. Or maybe it was 29 days. I think it was 29 days. Um, you could look back to 2015 and 16, and you could argue that the international markets were experiencing a big bear market, a market crash under the surface, while the U.S. market just experienced two really bad corrections. Um, you could argue this year, honestly, you could argue that you, this year that uh, when you look at companies like Microsoft, Apple, and Google, which have been doing extremely well, they're also huge, huge companies that make up a large percentage of the NASDAQ, the S&P 500, and the Dow, which makes those indices look artificially uh, healthier than they really are. Whereas when you look at a lot of the stocks within those market indices, when you look at the stocks, the individual stocks in the market, uh, what you what you would find is that there is a lot of unhealthiness under the surface. So you could argue that this year that we've seen a bear market or even a market crash in mid-sized companies, many of the large-sized companies, but mid-sized companies, small companies, small cap stocks, and micro cap stocks as well. And then International has just done okay. Um, And if you're interested in seeing more details or hearing more details about that and uh, really about what the market's done, both here in the U.S., overseas, the bond market, stock market, commodities, um, as I always do every quarter uh, in January, I put together what I call the market outlook update. Uh, which is just simply a look back at the prior year and kind of a look ahead into the new year. Um, in the first qu- at the end of the first quarter, I do what I call this quarterly scouting report, which is just kind of a, a update in between the outlook and halftime, which is done in July, just right around uh, 4th of July. And then I do one last scouting report uh, at the start of the fourth quarter, end of the third quarter as well, which again is just an update between the uh, halfway point of the year and the end of the year. So if you're interested, uh, make sure you subscribe on both iTunes and YouTube. Um, um, I should say that the Market Outlook um, presentation comes out on our Libertas YouTube page. It does not come out on this podcast page. I'll be uh, pointing it out just so everybody knows when we do podcasts, when I write articles, I'll make sure to point out that uh, we're going to be doing that podcast so you don't miss it. I'll also probably do a written supplement to that Market Outlook because I know a lot of people, like I said earlier, a lot of people like to read as opposed to listen or watch. So I'll probably do a written supplement as well that summarizes the Market Outlook video. Um, but it should, it's, it's, there's going to be, I've already started collecting a lot of information and there's going to be a lot of really interesting information about 2021 and what a crazy, crazy tough year it's been uh, to manage a stock portfolio uh, considering all the deterioration uh, that's happened underneath the surface of what we normally look at as, say, the S&P 500 index, the NASDAQ index, the Dow, and so on. But that's all we have for today's show. Be sure to share this episode with your friends and family if you think they would benefit or enjoy it. And if you'd like to discuss your personal financial situation further, please remember you never have to be a client to ask a question. So if you'd like to set up an intro call, email us at info at libertaswealth.com or head over to our website uh, at libertaswealth.com and hit our contact page up and you can send us a message there. 
Uh, you can be the first to listen and watch these episodes by subscribing both on iTunes and YouTube. And don't forget, if you head over to LibertasWealth.com, you can sign up to get not only these updates, but also our other screencasts I just mentioned, videos, articles, everything delivered directly to your inbox whenever they're released. Again, feel free to follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Libertas Wealth. I'm also on Twitter at Adam Koch, as well as Instagram at Financial Surgeon. And as I always say, there are thousands of podcasts out there, and you chose to give ours a listen today. So thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next year. Thank you for listening to The Cash Podcast with your financial surgeon, Adam Koch. To see any charts or images that were mentioned in this show or to check out additional articles, videos, and other educational resources, head over to LibertasWealth.com.